Hello everyone. I am Guo Zhuoqiang, and very glad to be here to introduce my work to you. I will first introduce our team members.、Uh, our team members come from Institute of Computing Technology, University of Chinese Academy of Science, Peking University, AI for Science Institute, Osaka University, Princeton University, DP Technology. And the Institute of Applied Physics and Computational Mathematics. The title of our work is "Extending the Limit of Molecular Dynamics with AB Initial Occurrence to 10 Billion Atoms." This is outline. First, the motivation and the state of the art. I will start my talk from molecular dynamics simulations. Molecular dynamics simulation is very important. It can simulate many biological, chemical, and material problems. There are several different methods of molecular dynamics simulation corresponding to different occurrences. The classical force field-based methods are fast but often limited in their occurrence. AB initial methods are highly occurrent but computationally demanding, so they are often limited in scale and speed. Machine learned potential are a promising approach which has AB initial occurrence but has lower computational complexity. The work of 2020 Golden Bear Prize improves 1,000 times in the temporal scales and 100 times in the spatial scales. It achieves 100 million atoms simulation using machine learning based molecular dynamic method, and the software they optimize is Depend-Decade. In this work, we continue to optimize this software and further improve 100 times in spatial scales and 10 times in temporal scales. Now I will introduce the deep potential model. The main idea of the potential model is to combine the machine learning method with physical principles. It adds some mathematical transformation to reinsure some physical symmetries, such as the translational, rotational, and permutational invariants while using a neural network. So, how do we use DeepMD to do the molecular dynamics simulation? Firstly. We can generate training data from DFT calculation software such as WASP, PWMAT. The scale of training data is not much large, so we can use DFT software to compute it. Then, with this data, we can train a neural network model using DeepMDKate. Now, for a specific physical system, we have a model to fit it. Give me another physical system. We can calculate the total energy and the force of each atoms. Then, com、uh, when combined with molecular dynamics software such as LAMPS, we can do the machine learning based molecular dynamics with a B initial occurrence. In each step, LAMPS give DeepMD a physical system, and DeepMD computes the force of each atom. The lamps can update the state of each atom and generate a new physical system. What we mainly optimize is the last step. So, how does DeepMD calculate the total energy and the force of each atom? The deep potential model assumes that the potential energy of each atom only depends on its neighbors. For each atom, we can build an environment matrix R I from its neighbor list. The S R I G, the first column of environment matrix, is passed into embeddedNet to obtain the embedded matrix G I. Then we can construct a descriptor of atom with physical symmetries. Next, we can produce the energy of each atom. By the fitting nets, the total energy is calculated by summing each potential energy up. Well, the force of each atom, which is the gradient of total energy, can be calculated by a neural network back backward propagation. The figure C and figure D are our embedded nets and the fitting net. 
In the process above, the embedding net is the most time-consuming part, which spends more than 90% of total time. The input vector SRIG is spanned from Nm to Nm times 128 by three matrix multiplication operations. The float point operations of embedded net approximately count for 95% of total flops. In addition, the embedding matrix GI count for 95% of total memory consumption. So next, I will introduce our innovations. Our first innovation is the tabulation of embedded net. According to various strength approximation system, for any continuous real-valued function defined on real interval, we can use the polynomial f to approximate it. In our algorithm, the embedding net uses three matrix multiplication to expand the input dimension from 1 to 128. So, we can use 128 polynomials to fit it. To ensure the accuracy of fitting, the domain of input is equally divided into several intervals. In each interval, we can approximate the embed net with 128 50-order polynomials. By using the tabulation method, float point operations are greatly reduced. Next, we continue to optimize the memory footprint using kernel theory method. As I introduced above, the embedding matrix GI is the most memory demanding variable, but it is just an intermediate result. After using tabulation of embedding nets, we can fuse the tabulation kernel with the followed matrix multiplication kernel. So now, we no longer need to allocate memory space for embedding metrics. The optimization greatly reduces the memory consumption, and it is very important because it means that we can compute more items at the same time. Our another optimization is called redundancy removal. We do this optimization with the insight that when building an environment matrix, we have to pad zero to make sure that the input of neural network has the same shape. But actually, the padding part does not need to process, so we can modify the related operations to remove the redundant calculations. Now, I will begin to introduce some optimization for Fugaku ARM processor. It is noted that the optimization I introduced earlier is useful on any general processor. For long vector architecture processor, especially for A64FX of Gaku, which support 512 bits SMD instructions. The vectorization is very important for performance improvement. In this step, we vectorize all our custom operations and we find that the conversion between AOS and SOA operation are common and time-consuming. For the table of tabulation method, which is stored in the model file, we can pre-process it to avoid runtime conversion from AOS to SOA. For, uh, for other variables which cannot be pre-processed, we implement a fast conversion using SVE instructions. In this step, we greatly improve the performance of all our custom operations by using SMD effectively. The last optimization is about hybrid parallelization scheme. Our original parallelization method is flat MPI, which means that we launch an MPI process for each call. As we know, a computing node of Gaku has 48 cores and 32 gigabyte memories. So on the Fugaku supercomputer, we have to launch 48 processors on each computing node. The problem is that each MPI process only has 0.67 gigabyte memory 
and each process must maintain a copy of neural network model. Thus, the set of subregions on a single MPI process is highly restricted by the memory available. So, we must use a hybrid parallelization scheme to reduce the number of MPI process. We have two implementation methods. The first one is called intraoperation parallelization, which uses multi thread each operation of TensorFlow. But it is very inefficient due to the frequently forking and joking. The second one is called interoperation parallelization. We partition the task and launch multi TensorFlow sessions. Each TensorFlow session is bound to one physical call. In this step, we use a new parallelization scheme to greatly reduce the memory overhead and the communication. Next, I will introduce our performance result. Uh, this is the effect of tabulation interval on occurrence. The two figures are the area of energy and the force with different tabulation intervals. The smaller interval has lower error and energy and force, but the smaller interval means the bigger table. So we choose 0.01 in our implementation. This is our machine configuration. All our work is done on Summit and Fugaku. For Summit, there are two Power9 CPU and six V100 on each Summit node. Of course, our main computing tasks are all performed on V100. Uh, for Fugaku, its computing node has a 64AFX ARM processor with 48 computing cores and 32GB HBM2 memory. Uh, this is an evaluation of step-by-step -step performance improvement on Fugaku and Summit. On Summit, we speed up three and nine times for the water and the copper system. On Fugaku, we speed up uh, 20 and 46 times for water and the copper system. Note that Fugaku has a better improvement is because the baseline on Summit is highly optimized. And the copper system has a bigger speed up is because uh, the copper system has more neighbor items. Uh, its embedding net is more time consuming. Next, we compared the performance of A60FX and V100. Because these two devices have different peak performance and power consumption, to be fair, we compare the normalized time to solution with respect to peak performance and power consumption which is calculated by time to solution multiplying the peak performance of power consumption. And the lower value is better. So, under the peak performance, A64FX is 1. times and 1.03 times faster than V100. And under the same power, A64FX is 1.3 times and 1. 0.1 times faster than V100. Uh, we also tested the strong scaling of water and the copper system on um, Fugaku and Summit, respectively. Uh, for water system, when the number of nodes is expanded to 91.2 times, the parallel efficiency of Fugaku and Summit are 41% and 47% respect, respectively. For the copper system, when the number of nodes is expanded to 228 times, the parallel efficiency of Gaku and Summit are 99% and 96% respectively. Next is weak scaling. For performance, we can reach 22.8% and 21.12% of peak performance on Summit and Fugaku. Uh, for scale, we can reach 25 billion atoms and 17 billion atoms for water and copper system, respectively. Uh, the next is our summary. 
If your research requires molecular dynamics simulation software with a B initial currency, we provide optimized code for Summit and Fugaku. If you want to optimize the neural network, you can try our fifth order polynomial tabulation method to compress your model. If you optimize your code for a multi core long vector architecture CPU, like a 64FX, you can also try our vectorization and hybrid parallelization methods. Finally, thanks for the support of our funding. Now I should end my talk and thanks for your attention.